All right, welcome back, everybody. You know, knowledge is power when it comes to protecting your health, and that's especially true when it comes to the serious condition that needs a neuroradiologist. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Natasha Klar from Austin Radiological Association is here with what you should know, and uh, just in case you ever need to, to follow this path. So good morning. Good morning. I'm so glad to talk to you because this is a topic that I know nothing in, and so it's great to actually get some knowledge on the fact. Um, glad to have you here. So, okay, so neuroradiologists, how is that different from just a radiologist? So, ra general radiologists go through four years of medical school training okay. after college, and then they go through five years of general radiology residency. The neuroradiologist, on top of that, has one to two years of neuroradiology subspecialty fellowship training that is in additional to the general radiology training. So basically, it's a subspecialist in the field of neuroimaging, which basically focuses on diseases affecting the head and neck or right. brain and spine. So it's more hyper-local hyper on that It's specific more subspecialized field. on yes. the imaging of neurological conditions. And how are you... How is your relationship with the doctor? Like, how are you doing your job in comparison to what the doctor is doing to the patient? So, typically, we're, we work very closely with other physicians. Right. Um, it, we work with general practitioners, such as family medicine doctors, or specialists, such as neurosurgeons or neurologists. And they usually call us in consultation, and we use their clinical uh, information to help uh, guide us to uh, a diagnosis mm -hmm. and interpret the images and come to an, uh, an accurate diagnosis. So give me an idea of, of some of the things you're looking at and like your day to day. So it, you know we there a variety of symptoms can uh, require someone to come to the attention of a neuroradiologist. Mm -hmm. So anything as common as an attention headache uh, to conditions such as neuro uh, like neuro-oncological tumors or back pain or strokes or trauma. So any of those, anything under the umbrella, umbrella of uh, head and neck or brain and spine right. imaging may require uh, the attention of right. a neuroradiologist. So we, we have a couple of images we want to show just to give you mm -hmm. some perspective of, of the things she's looking at every day. So what is this, a CT scan? So this is actually an MRI of the brain Thank you. Okay. on a patient who presented with headaches. And the uh, MRI shows uh, this large bright mass right. that is pushing on the brain so much that the brain is actually shifting to the other side of the skull. That's that image on the top left, That's, that lighter image. That is that image where you see that bright white right. area. That is the mass. And it actually turns out this is a benign mass. Um, it's called a meningioma, very treatable. And now this is the MRI of the patient after the mass has been resected by the neurosurgeon. And it shows that the brain has now returned to normal position and the mass is completely gone and the patient is completely fine. So that was a foreign substance in there that wouldn't normally be in there? That was a brain tumor in there. Wow. Yes. And you got... My goodness. And so you're able to remove that and fix the problem. Yes, the headaches. neurosurgeon removes right. that and we help diagnose it and help guide the treatment and how to... Uh, you know, guide operative planning for wow, that. Wow, that yeah. is fascinating work. I yeah. mean, that just seeing the images totally puts it into perspective. You yes. know what I mean? Um, okay, so you got to give me some more info. ARA, you guys are doing some amazing things around Austin. Mm -hmm. um, and, and people, of course, have, have multiple questions. Real quick, what's this one? Um, so this is an interesting case. Uh, it's a young patient who came in with uh, altered sensation in their extremities. And this is an uh, MRI of the neck, the cervical spine, and that red circle is around the spinal cord. And we got the MRI of the cervical spine to better assess what's going on with the right. cord. And the abnormality is this abnormal white, these abnormal white areas in the cord. And basically, this imaging appearance is specific to only a few things. Mm -hmm. And uh, it turns out the patient was inhaling nitrous oxide through whipped cream canisters and got uh, spinal cord toxicity based what? on they were trying to get a high from the nitrous oxide. And that's and, what caused that problem. Yeah, and the first time that diagnosis was came up in their the clinical picture was after imaging because naturally, oh, naturally. that might be withheld to right. the, that information was withheld to the ER physician so there's some amazing work going on right here in your own backyard here in Austin ARA is doing a lot of that how can people get in touch with ARA um, we have a central number okay. uh, that is very easy, round the clock, to uh, get a hold of us. We have people that work uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We're on call all the time. We have neuroradiologists, general radiologists, pediatric radiologists that work Wonderful. 24 hours.